Hi guys, my name is Samantha. Welcome to, or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about books. More specifically, we're going to be talking about my fall TBR. So, if you haven't noticed lately, I have learned a trick to my mood reading. If you're new here, I'm a mood reader. 100% a mood reader. Which makes it really hard to make monthly TBRs. And I've learned seasonal TBRs work a lot better for me. So I can have like a huge stack of books and then pick out pick out like what I want to read at that time for the next like three months. It works so much better. I feel more accomplished and I make good on the promises to you guys about what books I'm going to read. That being said, this is going to be a long video because I have a huge stack of books. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I have fifteen books for the next three and a half, maybe four months. Honestly, it feels weird to even call August the start of fall because it is literally 110 degrees outside right now. 110 degrees. I walk outside and I fry. I feel like I'm in an oven. <laughs> I don't want it. I want to live in one of those states where it's fall now and I can wear pretty clothes and drink hot stuff and just go outside without immediately breaking out into a sweat. But such is life. So... <laughs> We're going to move on. Like I said, we're going to do our fall TBR. I have obviously fan, of course, fantasy, <laughs> fantasy, romance. I have a little bit of dark academia. I know that was going to be a goal this year and I've kind of like gone wayward and a couple classics. Once again, another yearly goal that I have gone astray from, but we're going to, we're going to refocus for fall. Okay. So let's get started. Let's talk about the books I'm currently reading. And that is... Beautiful Nightmares by KJ Sutton. If you haven't seen, I hauled this book recently. <laughs> and I had to start it. It wasn't a plan. I just had to start it. It was just sitting there staring at me, looking beautiful. Um, if you don't know, this is uh, an indie book. This is about Fortuna Sworn. She is a nightmare. She is a creature who can make your worst nightmares come true inside your mind melt people's brains. Super cool. Um, her brother is captured by a fairy and taken to the Unseely court and she marries a Seely king in order to rescue her brother. And this is the fourth book. It is a chunky. The other ones are a little bit shorter. Definitely evolves rapidly. The situation evolves rapidly and I am very excited to continue this book. Um, read the trigger warnings. This is a little bit darker as far as like a romanticy goes. There is romantical elements. There's a lot of really interesting creatures and characters in this series. I highly recommend you should check this out. The next book, The Bone Shard Emperor by Andrea Stewart. I read the first book during the beginning of summer. This is the Bone, the Drowning Empire series. Um, the first book is The Bone Shard Daughter. This is great. <laughs> this is amazing. Honestly, hopefully the statement gets you to read it in itself, but I could see them adapting this into an anime because it is an amazing story and world. The world building is so great. Basically, this follows a the daughter of an emperor who uses bone shard magic. And what bone shard magic is, is that they take splinters of bones, encrypt them with code and place them into like a Frankenstein zombie sort of creature. And basically, this daughter having been raised in this empire realizes that her father is fairly corrupt and letting his empire fall apart. So she, she rises up, you know, she rises up, she learns the magic that her father has kept a secret and it spirals from there, obviously. Um, this is an island based world. So we have sinking islands, we have pirates, we have smuggling, we have creatures, we have fantasy, we have zombie like animals. And um, yeah, it is it is a ride. It is an absolute ride. It is worth the time to read. These are chunkier adult fantasy books, but I love it. Like I said, someone needs to adapt this into an anime. If there's anyone out here out there that can hear me, I would I would watch the crap out of that. <laughs> the next books, let's go with The Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice. This was a journey I started with one of my best reading buddies, Jesse. We read Interview with a Vampire in January and I've decided to go ahead and read all three all the first three books to the Vampire Chronicles. I don't think I'm going to continue after this one 
simply because the writing has gone a little bit down. We're gone a little bit down. As far as like subject, I feel like Anne Rice at this point was really like trying to build a world out of her first book um, and fell flat just a little bit. I'm not going to speak anything bad about Anne Rice because she is like an icon <laughs> and I would never, I could never even write a book. So I know that like there's no way I could even compare to Anne Rice nor critique Anne Rice. But I would definitely recommend the first book. Second and third, you gotta be dedicated, I feel like. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna finish with this book. I'm gonna do a whole video um, talking about these books, critiquing these books, and discussing them with you guys. So look forward to that one this fall. Let's get some of these books that I put down here. <laughs> um, the next one is Queen of Thieves, Thieves by Breezy Marsh. So this was my January pick for Book of the Month. I have recognized I have a problem and that is I have I'm backlogged on all of my book of the month picks I keep on picking books for the month getting excited about them putting them to the side and forgetting to read them so my uh, I have a, a goal to read a lot of these book of the month books to get them off of my TBR shelf and to be able to talk to them about you guys uh, this one is about a mafia queen in 1946 London, yeah, post, in, in uh, post-World War II London, there's a group of female thieves. Honestly, that's all I really needed to know to pick this book. I like that setting, I like that idea. Fairly short, so I'm looking forward to just like picking this up when I just need a little bit of a, like a, an interesting wild ride, is ho what I'm hoping that this is going to be. As far as book of the month books, we have another one on the list, but it's at like the bottom of my stack, so <laughs> bear with me. The next book we're going to talk about is a romance and that is In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. So I read Love Light Farms just last month. I am in love with this world, this setting, this small town in which these three romances from the series um, occur and I have a feeling that this is going to be the perfect fall read because Love Light Farms, the first book, was a very wintry Christmas themed book. And the last book I read, which is the third one, and it's called Ix Signals, that was a very summery read. So I had this suspicion that this one's gonna be the fall book. Um, basically this follows like the landkeeper, the farmer of this little group um, that runs this Christmas tree farm and a social media guru. <laughs> um, I believe it's a like, like a one-time hookup turned into like grumpy sunshiny very romantic <laughs> book i don't know what to tell you guys about this love Lake farms is just such a romantic setting um it's about a group of friends who cr make a, a a christmas tree farm like run a bakery they do like pumpkins and cookies and hot chocolate and coffees and lattes and they're part of like the small town that has a phone line where like the chief uh the firefighters calls you know the grandma who runs the oral shop and they all gossip together and it's very gilmore girl girl meets like oh it's just i love this i love this i want to live in this world so I'm like, this is the last book that she has out right now, and so I'm kind of holding on to it. I think I might read it next month, maybe when the weather finally starts cooling down here. I am very excited about this because the main male character is introduced in the other books, and he seems like such a sweetheart, and I'm gonna love it. All right, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> a classic. All right, I am gonna read some classics. I owe a couple videos on classics. Um, the one that I know for sure I'm going to read because my lovely friend Jessie wants to buddy read with me is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I don't know what to say about this book right now um, because this is Moby Dick. It's Moby Dick. It is angry white man fights giant whale and it's a huge metaphor and I will speak more about this once I've read it when I have a video out, but this is on the docket for this fall, along with probably a lot of other books that I have to read for my degree. <laughs> so, uh, the next one, Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I am ready to continue with my Robin Hobb journey. I read the Live Ship Trader series, one of my favorite fantasies of all time. I hear that this is just as great. 
Um, I am a character person. I love characters. That's what I want to read about. I want to see development. I want to see, you know, interesting, unique character, um, like uh, personalities and character dynamics and friend groups and romance. And I hear Robin Hobb is the queen of all of that. So I'm excited about this one. Once again, heartbreak. I don't know much about it. I know that it follows like a young man and his discovery of a magical power that he has it makes him very valuable to this kingdom that he has grown up in and thrusts him into the middle of a lot of political maneuvering so yes and i know that it follows him throughout his entire life so i think this this one specifically is like his her six book series i think they're separated into two trilogies I'm excited. This is a journey and I hear that there's a lot of heartbreak and I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for the feels that Life Ship Trader series gave me and I feel like if I want those those feelings I'm gonna have to stick with Robin Hobb. Um, tell me if you if you would disagree or agree with that. I'm sure I have some fantasy readers that are subscribed to my channel. <laughs> the next one, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vyong. I've had this book, I think I've talked about this book several times on my channel. This one is a young man who is a first generation immigrant writing letters to his mother who was like the catalyst to them moving to America. Um, very heartfelt. It is a contemporary book. I have a feeling I'm going to want to pick this up when I need something that's a little bit heartbreaking, a little bit emotional, and it is fairly short as well. So, you know, in between all these chunky fantasy books that you know I love to I love to hate. <laughs> I am excited about this. I have heard nothing but good things. So yes, 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 yes. The next book I bought for my birthday this year. I still haven't read it yet. And I am kind of excited. I've heard mixed feelings about this one. This is Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. This is a dark academia book following a group of girls in a boarding school. Book Brooke haunts school for girls specifically. Infamous site of a series of tragic deaths over a hundred years ago, soon to be the subject of a controversial horror movie about the rumored Brooke haunts curse. In the early 1900s, students Flo and Kara are, fell madly in love, bro brought together by their obsession for a scandalous memoir. A few months later, they were found dead in the woods after a horrific wasp attack, the book lying next to their intertwined bodies. Three more grisly deaths followed before the school was forced to close. Now the school's doors are open once more, but as the, as the crew of glamorous young actresses assembled to start filming, past and present begin to blur. Basically, I need to read this during October because <laughs> this sounds amazing. Like I said, so far I have seen mixed reviews. I decided to go ahead and pick it up because the cover is beautiful and I need this cover on my shelves and also because of the dark academia vibes. Like, girl gang, let's do it. Halloween, October, gothic, sly humor. Like that sounds, that sounds like a ride I'm willing to, to go on. And then, of course, we have to start another series because it's its not like I have don't have like 12 different series I need to finish. We're going to take a break and we're going to think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we're starting another series and that is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I have seen this book a lot. I feel like this is going to be one of those underrated reads that nobody really talks about but is absolutely amazing. One of my best friends recommended this and she has yet to fail me with a recommendation so we're going for it. Um, I'm going to read you the tagline because once again it was very much a blind pick. It was very much like someone recommended this to me. I value their opinion. I'm going to read the book. The covers are beautiful. I've seen this around in several places. Um, I'm going to be very excited if this is one of those underrated reads that just blows my mind and I'm going to want to rant about it for like the next few months. <laughs> but here's the tagline. Two young women, centuries apart, hold the power to either save their world or doom it. Alright? Okay. Once again, I wholeheartedly trust my friend's opinion on this book. We're diving in. Probably going to end up binge reading all three in this series. If you've read this book, tell me what you've thought about it. Like I said, it's definitely a book that I see around, but I don't hear much about, if that makes sense. So if you've read this book, tell me your opinion without spoilers down below. Okay. The next one was definitely another, like, 
cover pick because these colors, the blue and the red and the white, I liked, I loved. Um, this is Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames. Not only the cover, but it's called Bloody Rose. And the tagline is, girls just want to have fun. And it has this cover. So you knew I was going to pick it up. Like, I knew I was going to pick it up. So this is the same author as The Kings of the Wild, which I honestly did not hear great things about. I hear that this is kind of a book that caters to a certain audience who want, like, goofy, fun, quest-like romance. Not romance, I'm sorry. <laughs> quest-like fantasy um, with this group of guy, old men, who have, like, this very specific type of humor. I hear that this is like for a particular audience basically. It's not a bad book, just for a particular audience. But once again, all these other aspects plus knowing that Kings of Wild was a book that was published from this author as well definitely drew me into picking up this book. So this is about a bartender who joins a mercenary group as a bard because she wants to get out of her small town. She wants to embark on a quest. That sounds great. All those different aspects really just drew me in. Plus the plot line sounds fairly intriguing. I'm always here to, you know, enjoy a small town girl running out to join an adventure quest. Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm here for it. Okay. We've talked about this book several times as well. It's been on my TBR before. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Next one. I do have both the currently published Olivia. I need to learn how to say her name because I have a feeling I'm going to love both these books <laughs> I'm going to want to talk to you about them, but I have yet to look this up. I'm going to say Olivia Blake again, Olive Blake. Alone with You in the Ether. This is kind of a, what I understand to be like a sci-fi vibey romance. It's very much, I've heard it compared to like normal people where the relationship is just a very realistic romantic relationship surrounded by this idea of altering timelines. So very intriguing. I'm curious to see how Blake is able to pull this off. Uh, I have read the Atlas Six, which was my first of her books that I have read. I liked it. It was interesting. I think that because that was like a very like, it's like a four star book for me. I wanted to go ahead and try some other books from her. I think that this is going to be really good based on my opinions of the Atlas Six and some of the relationships that occur in that book. Um, I also picked up one for my enemy. I'll pull up on a screen. I have a physical copy, but not with me right now. I will probably read that book as well this fall. I'm I'm interested. I do not like Normal People by Sally Rooney. I'm not normally a fan of like very realistic romance. When I read romance, I want it to be fantastical or I want it to be like very Gilmore Girls, small town, like idealistic, I guess. Um, so this will be interesting. I am ready to share my opinions about it. Basically, I want to read this book so I can talk to you about it. Yes, plus the cover is gorgeous. I feel like all of her, she's very good with her production team on picking out gorgeous books. So, yes. Now the next two, guys. If you've made it this far, you, you get to be rewarded with huge fantasy books because I can't help myself, and you guys know that. We're going to knock a couple off of my TBR cart this fall. The first being Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. This is a series I'm going to finish. Yay, just in time for her next series to come out in a couple, I think in a couple months. I'm going to finish this one just in time for The Wicked Powers to come out. And I think The Wicked Powers comes out. That's her next series. And it's going to come out in 2024 sometime. She doesn't have an actual date yet. So I need to finish this chunker. Once again, I hear very differing opinions on this one. I hear that most people didn't like the way the characters reacted to situations in this book because it wasn't very characteristic of them from the other books. So I'm ready to experience it for myself. I'm ready to enjoy it. I don't think I'm giving you any spoilers. I don't even know what's going on. Looking at this artwork, I'm Shadow Hunters and Fall just go together. Okay, we're just going to capitalize it at that. I need to finish a series and Shadow Hunters and fall go together. So we're finishing this one, all right? Just in time for Cassandra Clare to come out with The Sword Catcher, which I'm also going to want to read. In fact, I might pre-order it after I get done with this video, because that's who I am. All right, the next one, which I was super excited to read and then never got around to it, shame on me, Babel by R.F. Kuang. Yes, some more dark academia, some more chunky dark academia. I, I think, 
everyone can agree that I have I haven't heard one bad thing about this book. I've heard maybe that it's kind of lengthy, but I like lengthy, so it's all good. This is about what is this one about? Was well, it? It's a historical fantasy epic that grapples with student revolutions, colonial resistance, and the use of language and translation as the dominating tool of the British Empire. So R.F. Kuang is basically coming in here, rattling everybody's cages, because that's what she does best. All right? She did it with her fantasy series. Uh, I forget the name of but I'll put it right here. And she did it with Yellowface. And she's going to do it with this one, too. Like I said, I have not heard one bad thing about this book and all everyone says that it is just a great conversational piece when it comes to discussing colonialism and language because that's what she does. Okay? All right. That's it. <laughs> also, um, I need to give some like shout outs to like Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo. Probably going to read that if it comes out in paperback here soon. Like I said, you know, Swordcatcher is another one that's going to come out here soon. And I think there's the only two new releases I'm like wanting to get my hands on before all of the releases come out in December and January. But that, I think, I think that's it. Oh, um, okay, one more. I didn't think about it because it's on Kindle. Um, Chris of Broad Brent, Broad Bent's Daughter of No World series. I started that one. I hope to finish it. But yeah, I think that's it. If you've held on this long, you might as well just go ahead and subscribe, guys. Just go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to talk about all these books um, in the upcoming months. Might have to do a couple of book blogs. I'm really bad about it, but I'm going to try. And yeah, tell me which book you're looking most excited for um, for me to read and tell you what I think about. Tell me if you have any very big opinions about any of these books. If you're a Robin Hobb fan, if you know anything about Furyborn, if you're one of the few people who really liked Kings of the Wild or you didn't and tell me why. If you're looking forward to, that's another book, Olive Blake's newest release, Masters of Death, tell me if I should read that too, add that to it. Tell me your opinions on this book, all right? Um, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Are you ex looking forward to another Carissa Clare, I'm sorry, Cassandra Clare series to come out? You know, riding that shadow hunter train? Are you, are you ride or die? I'm ride or die. For the Shadow Hunter train. I am. Okay? Alright. That's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.